First on the agenda to approve the agenda. Anybody have any amendments or additions to the agenda this evening? No, I don't. I move we accept the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Appointments. We're doing things a little bit different now, Mary. So we've been doing appointments before the public comment. So okay. you were up first. Do you have anybody else that's coming up in your cell? I don't believe so. Okay, so we can jump right to your appointment if you're good. Okay. Um, just give you a little bit of history. The Ford Festival started in 1989 by the Bethel Business Association, and they were um, doing it to highlight downtown businesses and area craftspeople and um, artists, and they conducted it for several years very successfully. And it even expanded to a three-day event at different times. And then um, they sort of wore themselves out, and you know, as people change their interests and retire, this kind of thing, so it stopped. And then about eight years ago, I think it was, Kathy Day and I, um, revived it because several people said we really got to do this again. So we got a few groups committed to come out and um, we mostly did it in the parking area here down the street for a few years and then we did out to common because it's a safer place for kids and the traffic of course is always a problem. So we also did a parade a couple of years and <clears throat> until we realized we were illegal. <laughs> Plus the um, the traffic stopping in <clears throat> four or five different places is a major event, and the fire department wishes to have their day when they're earning their money and doing their chicken barbecue rather than doing traffic control. So that's a problem. Um, so um, we moved it up to the common, and that worked out pretty well. Um, there are lots of, there are several different groups in the Michigan Fire Department. Um, they, they do their own organization, all kinds of comes together. Tracy does their pony pool. Uh, the churches do breakfast and dinners. And Girl Scouts and School Music Program, which is next to um, participate and earns quite a bit of money that we get for their programs. And of course, then there's the years. And last year we got the men's group and we got it too, so. Um, I think it needs a, a boost. I think it needs a, a bit more organization for that. So it, it's a fairly expensive, uh, the entertainment part is fairly expensive. So we're interested in perhaps seeing if we can get a boost. Mary and I had spoken a week or two ago, and, and I was telling her, as I've told you guys, and certainly Lindley and I and Wiley a couple years ago, I don't know, probably more than that now, I don't know, went to a uh, great economic development in the conference in Philly. And one of the things that they had suggested was don't reinvent the wheel. If your town has a festival or something, get behind it and try to you know, make it bigger and do certain things um, to assist with it. And I think a couple of years ago, we started. Um, $500 in appropriation. And, uh, but, you know, we're trying to push economic development, and it certainly seems like this would be, this is a great way to do it. It gets people to Bethel so we can see what's here and what's available, and, um, you know, it's going to see what a, great, what a great town it is. So, um, when Mary and I were chatting, we talked about $2,000 is increasing the appropriation because of the you know how hard it is to find volunteers, and then you're asking for volunteers to raise more money to do something that benefits us. So it feels like you know maybe the town needs to have a little bit of ownership here. We talked about reinstating the 5K and you know doing all sorts of things, um, maybe expanding some things downtown, trying to get someone to you know maybe horse and buggy or whatever to get people from up there to down here and work with the local you know, BRI as well as all the the businesses and try to have something, you know, a little bit, maybe, all encompassing this year. Any questions from the board? So, Mary, you 
charge rent for the spaces? Yes. That's one of the ways which we raise a bit of money. Usually it's up to $10, $10 depending on what they're doing. Um, we also do raffle, which usually brings in around $400. We have done fundraisers, dinners. Um, what else have we done? Sometimes the dinners are very really successful. Yeah. And we do get some, we have got some donations. Um, three or four hundred dollars from banks or local groups. Do you remember what the total amount of your expenses were for the last time that you did it? Um, um, I would say entertainment is usually um, around nine hundred to a thousand dollars. We have we have probably it's more than that because the um, past couple of years Scott Paulson has assisted us and we have paid him eight hundred dollars for his PA system and, and to entertain. And then we usually have at least one other group. So yeah, probably and then you'd also be pulled oh, other ones and magnets and so yeah, you but it was the expenses were where you're trying to advertise the event, especially to this year because you want to expand the event, there's gonna be more, you know, probably more cost if you have to if you decide to, you know, you end up having to give somebody money for the horse and wagon and that sort of thing. Right. It depends on who's involved in and what they wish to do. It varies a bit from year to year. And this is something too that you could also put, you know, into the budget, just like you do um, to rivers, and those aren't under, you know, those aren't appropriations that like the social service committee goes. We could add this to the budget, like something like that, so it's, you know, it doesn't touch the social affect social services. Does, does that come into the park recreation? Well, right now it's on the budget. right now it's under. Um, I think it's just under. It's under appropriations. Well, if we have always tried to fit it in between Tunbridge Fair, yeah. which uh, sometimes varies, and Steel has their event the last weekend in September. So if there is an extra weekend in there, then we choose that. Oh, it's just it's in the top. top. It is under appropriation. So, so you have like the league. cities and towns oh, in there, two rivers in there, a lot of development. So there's certain things that we just tag in there. Oh, so it's under oh, that. So it's not under the social services committee. It is part of your budget. Yeah. So would this be, well, I mean, I guess my idea was kind of to see how. The budget process go. We will be uh, starting that probably in the next yeah, meeting, meeting or two, and start going through those. So like, we'll be interested to see how the budget's coming together and mm -hmm. what our budget looks like. And uh, I mean, I, I think it's definitely uh, an activity that the town should be behind. And, and you know, I, I don't know if I can tell you we could do five hundred or two thousand or right. what right now. Looking at, but I think it's something that. The board members should, you know, we should look at strongly as we're forming the budget. Uh, I, I guess one question would be, would this be an appropriation that we just want to make once a year? Or would this be something where we want to kind of, like we've done with others, start the fund so that you can move money from one year to the other? They already have their own, you know, they have uh, their own account. They, they have their own account. Yeah, but they really so just carry a very little money in it because usually what comes in goes out, so there's not much money in there right now, I don't think, and and um, so they already have their own account only because I'm sure just the way someone set it up originally. But I mean, I could certainly put it in the budget. I can get you some more concrete figures if you like. Yeah, I could have looked to when I, I should have. Yeah. So, but it, I can put the two grand in the budget and we'll just see what the budget looks like. Build it around that and see what we come up. I would say any any information you give us would be helpful with. Okay. Well, I can give them that. Maybe what the previous year costs were and what they're looking to grow it to, you know, in 2021, you know, so that we can kind of, you know, look at we that. We have spent very, very little on advertising, and I think that's a, it's a, you know, it would be good if we could expand that. 
Yes, I think that's true. I can do the historic expenses because we have the yeah. so I can look that up for you. But as far as ideas for the future, yes, I think that that would be one of them for sure. Would be advertising and and um, like you said, if you were to do something different with you know to just try to change it. You know, we talked about maybe trying to get Dietrich to do something, and you know, we already have like you said the horse poles and and the energy committee. Uh, participated last year for the first time. Yeah, was that? Well, so think, you know you have a good like to expand that. I think we talked about that before about trying to bring the downtown businesses a little more yes. into the that was our goal for this year. what Mary had said just historically that in 2016 when we did Better Block and it came you know, all the way down Main Street, we saw a significant upturn in participation, but a lot of that was there was a lot of advertising costs coming from Better Block. And so that had been part of the discussion was like, could, could some of that shift and then con you know, continue to include downtown? And I think what ended up happening was like just people power. There just wasn't quite enough, and then budget for doing extra advertising. So, really having having seen what it can do, you know, and I think it was pretty phenomenal that year. It, it really people had no issue walking back and forth. You, there was you know good traffic, really slowed down traffic on Main Street. Like it just really kind of brought those two pieces together. And I think the downtown businesses have over the years said like, "It'd be great to bring it back. It'd be great to bring it back," but we just haven't quite made that connection happen. And I think it. You know, this is one way to really sort of drive that home and say, okay, we've gotten some extra appropriations from the town, but we need that, that match of people power now. You know, we can't do it just with money. It's really, it's kind of the two coming together. So. Well, it really worked out much better when we had the venue with the, at the bar and the dance and whatnot. I mean, yeah, that was the first time last year. That was real. We planned to that for the whole, mm -hmm. whole concept. Published and yep. posted, and it does. It gets has to be um, it gets 
posted in three places and has to get published in the newspaper of general circulation for at least 30 days um, prior to any proposed conveyance. So I'll try to, you know, I'll try to get it tomorrow if I can in the paper that gives us 30 days. And um, for the select board, I included in there the notes from Joe McLean. As you can see, there's a lengthy um, motion in which he is saying, here's the language for proposed motion. That needs to be made um, if you're to uh, approve the 1061 notice, which we need done so we can move forward with, you know, move forward to the land sale. So the section of it does say in here, um, convey the select board chair over such persons, you know, shall be authorized to execute all conveyance related documents at the conclusion of the 30 day notice. So it can either be Chris or it can be me. Um, so Chris is entirely fine, so we can, it's fine either way. So if someone wants to that motion. Any discussion? Okay. Um, Chris, you want to take over? Yeah, I'll take over. So you can put in the minutes, right? Do you have a copy of the packet, Lisa? Do I? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought that Kelly was going to email it to you. I'm oh, sorry. I can put it in. It's a paragraph to approve the posting publication of the notice. Not there. It's in the previous page. Yeah, it's on the back. The back. Need to approve the, the motion needs to be to approve the posting and publication of a notice of sale of municipal real estate pursuant to 24 VSA 1061A1 regarding the town's proposed conveyance to Vermont River Conservancy Inc. of an easement for the installation of rock riprap on the west bank of the third branch of the White River as conveyed to the town by easement deed of Thomas W. Kellogg and Madeline Kellogg dated April 26, 1984, and recorded in Book 55 at page 10 of the Bethel Land Records. Provided no petition is submitted pursuant to 24 BSA 1061A2, objecting to said conveyance, the select board chair shall be authorized to execute all conveyance-related documents at the conclusion of the 30-day notice period. So moved. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for reading that. Mm -hmm. Now, what was, I guess, what was the main reason why they had the, the easement to rock the riprap? I, they had Did given they, it. I, they had issues with years, it years ago. Protecting the downtown with that, or? There was, um, I, I think I had given a copy of the easement a while ago. So, it was, when was the easement originally given for that riprap, Steve? Uh, 1984. Or, uh, and they did, it looks like they did the work because there was some riprap around the area, but obviously it didn't hold up. During so they, they granted it, they went in and they did some riprap. I mean, uh, yeah. That easement is still on the one in case you need to go into further maintenance. Or exactly, yeah. So, yeah. So we need to, yeah, so we need to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. So I, mean, I guess my question is, what, what are the impacts of not maintaining the riprap now, now that it will go to a natural yeah. It's the river itself is actually moved down the river. Yeah, it has no purpose anymore. Yeah. So there's no. It's not in place. No. It's, okay. It doesn't matter. No, it's fine. So we have a motion and a second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. And then I'll sign that. That's time. That's time. Yeah. Okay. Which is that? Yep. Okay. So the second thing uh, that part of the request would be for the select board to sign a memorandum of agreement with the DRC Vermont River Conservancy, um, authorizing really the whole conveyance of the property from DRC to the town um, once this easement um, 
a fuel period and stuff. So we've raised eighty thousand dollars or so of the ninety that is necessary to complete the deal. And our, both of our funders, the primary funders, require this is really the equivalent of a purchase sale agreement. It's it's a official sort of uh, recognition by the town that this project is going to go forward. So I gave Therese a copy. I have actually two copies that I signed here. Also, um, and I believe that they've seen this before. It was like maybe it was maybe it wasn't a prior packet. Because there had a different date on it before. Well, yeah, there was a there, there was a one of these was presented as like for two years ago. Yeah. And we changed this one to the fact that the property is now part of it's not purchased by DOC, we own it. Um, the prior MOA um, was anticipating the sale, so Joe McLean and I uh, redrafted that to kind of bring it up to current, what are the current conditions? So the bill has been made by yep. the time mm -hmm. yep. of the yes. uh, new guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. So that was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. All right. So and Joe and McLean has looked it over, so there's no you know town attorney, so certainly no reason for us not to make a motion to approve it. And um, so you don't need a motion, just a signature? Well, you need a motion. I would say that you should have a motion um, to authorize the chair to sign the memorandum of agreement between the town of Bethel, Vermont, and the Vermont River Conservancy. So I'll move. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, so, <coughs> so if you have the two side ones, Chris can sign with Steve. Sorry. Just because we have Steve and Mary here, um, are people from the town and somewhat even more specifically thinking like school teachers taking groups of students, are we allowed to go onto that land yet, or would you like us to sort of hold off on that until it ends? It's, it's, I mean, from our point, it's fine for people to be out there, you know, um, it's, all, we, it's all insured under us right okay. now, but yeah. no, no motor vehicles, except right, for right, yeah. cultural use. Just, I'm mostly thinking, because we're doing, with the middle school, we're doing entirely outdoor classroom-based education right now, and it's right across from the school, so it'd be yeah. a cool property to just kind of take them into to talk about the difference of the woods behind the school versus the you know the field and the flatland and the river and, yeah you know, kind of get them doing some observations on on it's that fine. it's fine with us just you cool. know yeah. people observe normal sort of respect yeah. that is absolutely yeah. part of what we're teaching them so yeah yeah, yeah that's cool. okay thank you thank you i think so all right thanks a lot thank you thanks steve thanks.
and thank you for submitting the letters and, and the um, resumes. That was great. So yeah. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Does, does Burlington have an energy committee here? Does Burlington currently have an energy committee, do you know? Um, they, they might. I, I talked to one person, Todd Tyson, he does the radio. He might be on the Randolph or Tumbridge Energy Committee, but I, I haven't heard anything solid. Um, I just kind of have a few random networks one out there. These, one of these letters mentions that they wanted to be involved with Bethel because Burlington, um, South Orleans doesn't have one, but Burlington and Sharon have one. Yeah. I got on a website that mapped out other energy committees in yeah. Vermont, and it noted that Sharon and Wells didn't have one, but it didn't list a website, it was just basic like, number or email address. Yeah. Yeah, all I ask is, you know, we keep started talking about this uh, a month or so ago, not just the energy committee, but some of the committees in Bethel that are low on attendance right now and how you know, maybe we could partner with a neighboring town to, you know, maybe something like the Energy Committee could partner with, you know, Royalton or Rochester, some pools and talent together, you know, and stretch out our reach a little bit. So I didn't know this was an opportunity with, you know, technically some Royalton residents that, you know, of, of doing that. And, you know, might be something to do to reach out to see if they even, if, you know, could be famously put one together and it just dissolved
thinking about their future and wants to make a difference in, in our town. Would you be able to send me the contact person at the school? Because I would love to reach out to them and let them, you know, try to make inroads the same way, getting someone to maybe look at other committees. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, you mean for White River Valley High School? Yeah. Okay. So there's also the Sharon Academy and Randolph Technical Career Center. Well, where's the one you, you were okay. using? The, if I did Sharon Academy, if I did the high school, then I'd get that resident. Okay. High yeah. school student, maybe. So yeah, if you could give me that, would be super. Yes, the yeah. probably uh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, and like um, me, I grew up in Randolph, but I grew up right on the line. So I went to Randolph School, but we paid taxes in Bethel. Okay. So you know, you uh, we're kind of all spread out. <laughs> uh, but I can definitely give you that um, contact Thanks. information. All right. So we just need a motion to. Point two gentlemen, if you want to just read your names into the record so we have them, just make sure we get it. Um, so this is Christopher Shuffler, yep. and this is Jesse from Newspark. <laughs> this is Jesse? Yeah. yeah, this is Jesse from Newspark. He's not trying to be on anything. No, no, no. Uh -huh. And then the other, so the other gentleman's not there today. Um, Casey's a female. She's a woman. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so Casey um, has, has would be the other one? Do you want spellings? Is that what you're? Mm -hmm. Are you wanting spellings? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Do you want spellings for those? No, I don't. Okay, good. Thank you. I know the mass, they, you know, can't tell who's in the audience anymore. <laughs> can't hear half the time. So, uh, motion for appointment of those? Move to accept. Okay, second. Timer. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for taking interest. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to note that now that we have five people, you know, we're definitely on the ball for outreach. But when it comes to infrastructure, things in the budget, um, if you're buying a new weed whacker, if you're building a new building, we are here to help you with researching, cost comparison, making good decisions with the taxpayers' money. Perfect. And we'll be back in um, the beginning of the year with some goals and strategies. All right, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.
for so much support that we've been getting about the skateboard park with our corn drop and our raffle. I have done $500 worth of raffle tickets already. And so um, we had started um, at our, our July meeting, starting to plan a thank you opening ceremony um, and to have a drawing. And um, um, it has come to light to us that there are gonna be projects at the center um, that's gonna interfere and it's not a good idea to have an, a, a celebration October 3rd, which we were uh, had started planning at our July meeting. So um, I kept thinking, well, how do we do the drawing? How do we do the drawing and say thank you to all these people that are, are doing so much to support us? And so I was wondering if we could do a, a small event at the band shell October 3rd, um, have a um, band, uh, a skateboard demonstration, and do our drawing. Um, we could, um, we have talked about 11 to 4 having something, having people bring a picnic, some hot dogs and lemonade. So um, we're open to success, suggestions just so that we can really say a good thank you um, um, to people. Um, um, and, and do our drama because we have so many people that I have so many tickets to draw. Mm -hmm. So you, obviously there's a mass which you're aware of of people. Yeah. So and obviously yeah. it's social distancing. There's no right. bathrooms. There's so what about the cost for the um, band? Where's that? Well, we were we were going to get the band free. They oh, were nice. going to do an April event yeah. with us, and they were. Yeah. They were going to do it free. So um, they were going to do it for free, but I, you know, so we're, 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 you know, that got canceled. Our April event. So, so basically, we're we're working. We're still working on that. You got to just check with Kelly certainly to see there is a facility. You know, for more, you know, there's a, there's rules for the facility. Um, you know, okay. no smoking. You know, open right. flames. No. Like I'm a couple more yeah. than I'm missing. And yeah, um, no skateboards as part of it's a skateboard. I'm just no, is there no <laughs> yeah, I don't so think that's what a skateboard there. demonstration at the church parking lot? Well, uh, my a neighbor of mine has built this kind of wooden thing. Uh -huh. So I thought to to borrow it and just on the grass part and you know that, that have a, a skateboard demonstrate, you know, where the, the back, I start with the, um, where the fountain is, there's space, or um, at the end where the farmer's market is set up, you know, and, and have a demonstration there. Um, with the band concerts, I went to all the band concerts and I worked with people, social distancing, and so I thought it would be, um, um, it would work for, but I'll just talk about the cottage house, unfortunately, which I'm sorry about. I just was the delay. Pedro is going to be digging a three foot by three foot ditch through the parking lot, so it's just going to be messy. And obviously, we need to you know we're still grading and seeding around the um, the uh, the skate park. The skate park needs to cure till October first, so I was like, so we just can't have, it, unfortunately. So, but oh, by the way, uh, Saturday there were two skateboarders. I know we put a sign up today. Um, So, yeah, yeah. So, so that's good, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so, so yeah, so we, you know, we like to rethink and maybe, you know, with suggestions from you guys, um, do our drawing and uh, a small event at the bench. It's a public, you know, place, so I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you need board approval to do it, Ellie. Uh, I mean, um, as long as they meet the state regulations, if they know the rule, they've got half the meet what the state's requiring at the time, right? Yeah, just, just yeah. fill out the form with. Fill out the calendar, yeah. With the town office and then. If we work it out, we'll sell hot dogs and hot dogs. I don't know, what was that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Mom. Something 
about. I was saying that they, if they're going to serve food, they'd have to meet state requirements on. Oh, so you think they have to have a bathroom? I have no uh, idea. Oh. I don't well, you can always, you can always reach out to the white church. Right, sure. Yeah. Use the, you know, right. probably use the church for a few hours that day. Okay. But, but I don't think you need, I mean, I don't think you need permission from the board to okay. use the band shell. You just have to. Okay. No, it's just. Uh, fill out the form and. All right. Make all the. Yeah, okay. Talk to Kelly Ash. So she yeah. keeps the schedule. I know, I know somebody on the Saturday is, is doing um, a fitness thing. I don't remember what time she clears out. So you're going to want to, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. It's Saturdays ongoing, and it's open to the public. And so, so you'd have to ask, again, that's what Kelly's the keeper of the calendar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Just give her a buzz. I will definitely do that. All right. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, Ellie. Yeah. Yeah, actually, this is committee related. So, um, basically, in advance of Wednesday's special meeting um, on the town plan, um, we, I have a, a few people who are going to be submitting a, met, a letter and some suggestions about the town plan. But um, one of the suggestions is to create a new um, equity committee within Bethel, within our the um, committee, the uh, grouping, what, what do you call it, or committee boards, options. Yeah. Um, and so I'm here just to ask uh, what the proper channels, we want We want this to be something that um, we go through the proper channels. I'm not familiar with how a new committee gets created here. Um, and so I'd love your all's help on that. Uh, sure. I actually own an email me. Okay. And so I emailed him back um, because he had some questions about inclusion in the um, social inclusion in the town plan. So I looked up Two Rivers, you know, regional Two Rivers, on whatever, on PG, you know, the big name. And uh, the, so they had the regional town plan. And they had a bigger section. So I copied it, cut and pasted it, and emailed to Owen. And then he asked the same thing about the committee. So my suggestion to Owen was, um, because he explained it was going to be like one year and he had a couple, three like points or like a mission statement. Yeah. So my comment to Owen was, hey, could you just, um, you know, prepare a memo to the board and that maybe talks about what those three statements are, you know, how you gather the information or the data, like how is it measurable? How, how do we know if we're successful to get from point A to point B, I guess, was... So I yeah, so I had emailed him back that information, and that was my opinion. Um, that way, I figured that the board had, you know, a good memo outlining what you wanted the committee to be. Um, you know, he even had a time frame for one year, and, and then he had a, some ideas and goals. So I figured if he had it all in a memo, we could give it to the board, and I'd give it to him in a packet. And then... Is the right kind of official? No. Regulations or anything, you have to go through the form of everything. No. As far as state statutes. Or no, but I was going to ask the one thing I did say to Owen, and, and I was going to ask Chris, is what was the visioning committee? That ended just when I got yeah. there, and I don't know what it. The visioning committee was really, well, we started it and it just lost membership. <laughs> so it really got put on one or two of us to do anything and just didn't have time to do it. But the visioning committee is really like, just out in front of the planning committee. So the visioning committee is really gathering the the community um, information of what what community members would like to see in their town. Uh, and then that information gets brought to the planning commission to kind of make it happen. Oh, okay. Uh, like the vision is like a long-term, like a um, 10 or 20 year vision. Rather, okay. the planning commission, you're really just short-sighted to look at your next, you know, one to five years. Yeah. Where your visioning is really like, you know, how do you want, you know, how do you encompass the White River, you know, into your village, you know, oh, okay. like that. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, uh, yes, I had told well, Owen I'd ask you yeah. what it was. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's still, it's still technically, a, you know, <laughs> maybe it just kind of died because <laughs> nobody could attend anymore. Uh, oh, yeah. But, I mean, typically, in the past, if it's going to be a town, uh, if it's going to be a, a town committee, what we've asked for is some sort of like vision or mission statement of what the committee, you know, kind of what yeah. we were saying, what, what the committee would all be about. Um, 
And, you know, I don't think we've asked for, like, time, how long it's going to be together. No, we, really just, just like we a, just sent it here and it's emailed. <clears throat> yeah, just um, what the committee is and what the, the goals of the committee would be. Yeah. And then um, then we would, we would have to make, a, like, a special appointment so that if anybody wanted to come and, you know, talk for or against the committee, then they're more welcome to do that. And then it goes before the, the board members to, you know, approve it or, or not. Right, and it would have to do, decide, like, are they, um, you know, probably if you have a, a max amount of people, I'm not sure that matters, but if they were all about the residents or where did you want it to be, you know, that sort of thing, where you can allow outside membership, that sort of thing, guys. But yeah, I'm sorry, I should have CC'd you on my response to Owen. <laughs> but, but, then, but then what happens is just like any of the other committees, like you saw tonight with the energy committees, then after that, then you then you would have people formally sign up for a committee. And usually the committee is like a one-year assignment, and every year you kind of re-up if you want to go. And then what we ask is for some sort of formal letter from each person of, you know, well, where they live is usually a big one, and then, you know, maybe a reason why they get, want to get on that committee. Um, we, like we do that, and because in the past, sometimes people have been volunteered without knowing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, congratulations, you're on a committee. They didn't even know they were on it, you know, you know. So now we ask people to just kind of give us a formal letter that they want to do it. And, you know, we've ranked four here. I don't think we've ever rejected anybody. No. And so. we just said, tell, you know, tell them why you want to be on a little bit about yourself. Yeah. And that way, no, if, if they are from outside here, like, like with the energy committee, because we're getting a little low, then kind of a little more in depth on, you know, why pick that little or, you know, might be because they don't have an option somewhere else. Or, and is that sort of up to the committee then to determine how many people are on that committee and how many, yeah. you know, whether they can be in or out? Um, that's up to the committee. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you can kind of, I mean, it's because it's not a statutory driven like the planning commission. Yeah. So it's not guided by state statutes, so you can kind of make those decisions. The only thing you would have to do is, you know, when you do establish a committee like that, and you do, you'll have to formally meet at a certain time, a certain place that would have to be. Formally. Yeah, you know, to do an agenda, just like uh, for the select board and take Do an minutes. agenda and keep many, uh, you know, meeting minutes that would go to Kelly to give to the board members. And yeah, you have to follow the open meeting law, all which, you know, if you have any questions, just email me and I can give you that stuff. But do you want me to forward that email to you that I sent to Owen? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'll like that. And, um, but yeah, that's, and, and his email is pretty detailed. So yeah, and I did, he, I did reference to him the social inclusion and I think I made a mistake on this one. 
Yeah, it's the, it, the Spark and the Vermont Community Foundation won. Okay, well, I will say this. Somebody gave me the, the one that, well, let's start with this one. Revised Spark Grant Application. Yeah. Um, was, that's the one you gave me, and you said that it was, um, the application submission was 1015, and explanation says payment for balance of skate park, or if the ta Tarrant Park Foundation pays $10,000 in full, it was going to go to the skate park. Oh, no, 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 that's not the one. Okay, $3,000 says it's the letter has to spark, has been premiered by the Medical Recreation Committee to announce our intention to apply for the Spark Connected Community Grant. Spark Connected Community Grants, the community's requesting blah, blah, blah. It's requesting $3,000. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, well, that was this was with it. It says, purpose of applying for the grant is to help fund the construction of the skate park and the recreation facility, um, specifically for the balance due, and that's $3,000. And I had said to you that $3,000 can't go to the building anymore until the ten thousand is paid back. Yeah. And you said that if the Tarrant pays the full ten, right. it will go to the skate park. If not, this will go to the paying back, right? Right. Okay. Then it's good. And there's no matching funds required for this. Yeah. Do we do we don't actually need a motion to approve the application? The past we just done. Yeah. I know that you're submitting it. Right. Exactly. So that's the deal with that one. Okay, so, so is is this next one for twenty thousand? Is that different? That, that 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 is not that is not a one at all. Okay, and that's funny because that's the one I hand wrote, and it says updated from the 315 2021. So yeah. this was all filled out by. Yeah, I made a mistake on that. Okay. okay. All right. So, so the three thousand dollar one, is there's good. no matching funds. So if you get three thousand, yeah. you don't get the chip in so much. Right. Mm -hmm. So that would. You know, and the three thousand will go to paying back the ten unless she gets the ten dollar. Right. right. From yeah. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. So, so the the next one is from to the Vermont Community Foundation. No, it's the, here. The other one is the Tarrant. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's not for twenty anymore. No, that's for fifteen. No. Okay. And it says as a description, the funds would be used for elements of the skateboard park that were currently eliminated because of budget cuts. These elements are manual pad, fun box, and grind ledge. So is that still? So that would, that would either you know, pay the balance and then, because the balance is, we figured is about 10,000 and then with 5,000 would go for the manual pad and, and what's the percentage of the match? Um, the that we're doing the fundraisers. No, I mean, is it like a five percent, twenty percent? Oh, they didn't give me one. Oh, Taryn did say okay. Yeah, no, Taryn, sure. and and she called this morning, and they're meeting in October. Nice. And they'll have an answer for to to us by the end of October. Oh, and they just want to know that we're we're doing the fundraising, that we're um we're we're they didn't have that we had to have a match or anything, they just want us to be positively doing fundraisers. Yeah, Tarrant tends to be more of an in kind. Oh okay. so it's not a, a direct match, it's more of the in kind. So I think that's what Ellie's yes. referring to is like they're doing the fundraising, they're considering that they're in kind. Yes. And you guys are constantly fundraising. So. <laughs> you, can, you can prove that all the time. Yeah, they are good. They are always yeah. That's great. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, sorry for the confusion then. I yeah, I was. Thank you for. Yes, I'm sorry for that. Oh, that's fine. No problem. Can I just clarify? Yeah. So this is the Spark Grant? The Spark Grant is the first one. Okay, this is the The second out. one is Tarrant, T A R R A N T, instead of Vermont Community. Okay, all right. And, and it's for fifteen thousand, not twenty. Spark okay. is the Vermont Community Foundation. Oh, okay. All right. They're they're one and the same. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, right, because they're under the umbrella of the community. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I got that. So. Oh, all right. I was confused about that too, yeah. Ellie. Yeah. Any further discussion on the two grants? 
good luck with those, Ellie. Right. Yeah. We have some recreation committee. Uh, motion to appoint two recreation committee members. Melissa and Caleb Harwood. Do they serve one year terms, Ellie? Um, I don't we we never had a term. I wondered. I, I we never had terms on. I was uh, recruited in 2010 and so they never you just can't get away. <laughs> Shane and I recruited because we were doing a skateboard park. So we usually find, and these two people, they signed up at town meeting, and I wasn't aware of it until um, I, I found, uh, somehow I found out in May and contacted them and, ha and met with them in June and had them come to uh, participate in Zoom meetings, our Zoom meetings. So, yeah. So. Okay, so a motion to move them onto the committee. So moved. Second. So yeah, we'll have a Thank you. Now you just changed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, correct. Right. All right. And our piece of property on over 59 Hill Road. So it's basically the same process that you just went through for um, for the notice of municipal sale to do the get the um, rip wrap off you know easement off from that property. We have to do the same thing. We're going to have to write a notice. All right, we have first we have to post the notice for sale, and we're going to have to set a base bid and we advertise the property for sale. Once we get you know a bidder that. Maybe we set a timeline. So once we get the bidder, then we have to go through this process. Then we warn we're going to sell the property to John, you know, James, for X amount of money. And you do the same thing with the 1061 notice. You warn it for 30 days, and then if, if there's not a um, pushback from the voters, then you're good to go. Petition filed. So obviously, what you can see in here is the. I gave you a copy of the appraisal that we paid for to have done by Rick Benson. And his basically is what he said in the end is that he thinks, in his opinion, the defined value of the property is $26,000. So I talked to a real estate agent, and although we're not going to use a realtor, we'll advertise in the paper and we'll, you know, other ways that we'll advertise the property for sale. If a real estate agent sells the property, because we all know they're looking for the property right now, so then um, what she suggested was we put a 3% commission into our price. So whatever our base bid is that we're going to accept, um, we need to make sure that the 3% is factored into that. So um, you and I were talking, what do we currently have into the property? So we bought the property for, I believe it was 14000 500 or something like that and that was a few years ago obviously we've insured it and we have got um, done like right. part of the eviction process so yeah i mean i think that if you got it would take you at least i mean to cover time and my time i know greg had spent time with it and um certainly 20 grand would cover you know more than cover everything you got it probably closer to 18 maybe but you know, it's, we don't keep track of all the hours right. that we do certain things. So we'd be paid back on it. So you'd be paid back on it, yeah. And but that doesn't include the 3%. No, that's what I'm saying is we need to add the 3% on top of it. So say you decide that your minimum bid you're willing to accept is 27000 because he gave you some comparables. Um, and then the property, there's a couple issues with the property. One is it's a spring. Um, the second is that the septic, while you can see on the last page, I copied for you what the septic easement um, looks like. It was never filed, so um, Rick doesn't really know if the septic was put in in this manner or not. This is, you know, there's the, he 
think, but we don't know for sure. Obviously, there's pictures of the property, and it's not obviously in, in good shape. The roof leaks, and, and there's quite a bit of damage there. So um, he valued it, and you can see his, he does quite a detailed breakdown for you. And he listed his comparable properties um, that had sold. So he had you know 26,000 on one, 27,000 on the other. 24,000 on the other and the land of that and who's uh, sorry Judy can correct me if I'm wrong the land there that 11.4 acres is pretty yeah yeah it's not very usable mm -hmm. not very no, I mean, where the house sits is pretty steep yeah the only thing I know about the the foundation is that Thad Smith poured it he told me that himself and I believe that uh, Rick said it has rating heat in it so really it seems like everything have to go and it's as it is this is a cleanup job make no bones about it the land needs to be cleaned up there's junk there's you know so even the septic would have to be redesigned if it wasn't approved you know usually when when you the zoning permit has got to have the septic design approved right no it's usually says that i think it says straight that we refer you to the state septic you have right. to follow the state septic regulations but we don't follow them. Well, which, is, which is filed with springfield yeah, so, but, and I'm not sure, Rick, I assume he called Springfield, I don't know, but I'm assuming, you know, to see if he filed his, you know, permit, but the other thing, too, is somebody who was going to, who buys it can certainly put a camera down there and see if maybe it was put in, you know. Who knows? Yeah, Rick was like, I'm not really sure, so. He, he didn't want to take a deep dive? No, no, no. no. <laughs> and he made him in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> So basically, um, so what do you, what would you propose that we set for a minimum? Uh, do you have a number in mind? It, in mind, I mean, what's the, I think that he said, what was his base? He said 26. What's, I, I mean, he says it's worth 26, the comparable, you know. Yeah. What's, in that area, 26, 27, 24. Oh, it's on the tax rolls for a much larger number. Oh. It's gone downhill since yeah. the public was appraised. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's, you know, it's a rough shape. What's the oh, since August when he appraised it? Yeah. No, <laughs> no, 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 we meant the town. Oh, with the town of Pisa. Oh, the assessment, yeah. Right, because they were living back then. Yeah, the assessment. Sure, I don't know when they're Yeah, I mean, I think you're going to have, seven, I mean, nine, if that. somebody goes into a, you know, decides a bit more, then that's great. But I think with the, the way it is, it's I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll be, yeah. Well, it's going to be hard to do a, a sale of, um, I think it's going to be hard for um, you know, so what the three percent. So really, you're looking at what seventy three percent of twenty six thousand is seven eighty. So it's so and then we have to advertise it and all that stuff. I don't think you can take them. In, what, maybe what maybe twenty seven thousand is the. What does it charge us to put for the appraisal? Uh, I think it was five hundred. Say four or five hundred. Yeah. yeah, it was in the last, maybe it's right here. Well, I mean, kind of looking at it in the... 500, yeah, it was here. There was another parcel on Sugar Hill Road that was 2.3 acres that went to 26. And one on Christian Hill that was probably more comparable land-wise that had 10 acres, went for 27. You know, I don't know, I mean, it seems like- Ben Hill Road, yeah, that was a range of 24,000, yeah. yeah. I mean, it kind of seems like that, that 26, 27 seems to be the- Yeah, you could put it, I mean, then say your base bid is, your minimum bid is gonna be 27,000. Say when those sold. People want to have a bidding more than have that, right? <laughs> well, usually when the hand uses is comparable, it has to be within a year, right? So Six he tries to find recent sales, yes. And it says right here, date of sale, this one was 8-26-19, the 640 Sugar Hill. Sure. The uh, Christian Hill was 8-10-2020, oh, okay. and that it was 2017 was Ben Hill, so that was an older one. But that one on Christian Hill does have a uh, septic design. Yeah, so that one. Oh, but he said none on, on his appraisal. <laughs> that was, um, yeah, so. 
Well, it's like this one has a septic design to it, so it's yeah. hasn't been confirmed. You know, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it could be there. I mean, it probably is there, it just hasn't been, you know. It's, I mean, it's likely. Basically, so, basically, somebody's just buying the land and they don't have the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it would be as it is if we get that exactly the way it is. Because yeah. you're going to have to pay to tear that down and, and dispose of it. Yeah. So, that, you know, that, there's quite a cost. And this is a minimum, so. Yeah, you're setting the base bit, which is this is the lease we're going to take for it. Yeah. So, I mean, you could just say the base it's as is, and the base bit is twenty-seven thousand. As long as we come out with what the taxes were on it, we, which we are, right? Yeah, yeah, because you paid those. It was purchased like three, four years ago. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was purchased before I came in and taxed it by yeah. and, 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 and it was prior to us, you know. And it was fourteen thousand. Fourteen more. At least the good thing is we get rid of it. We don't yep. own it. And why it goes back on the tax rolls? And if somebody cleans right. it all up and adds something nice up, then we win. Right. Because it'll be a something nice. I agree on this as well. So what will we want? So you want to do the base bid of twenty seven thousand as is? Yep. Yeah. That's With right. the three percent. Yeah, that includes the yep. I'm saying includes Oh twenty seven includes, includes the three percent. Gotcha. Yeah. So move. All right. Okay. So all in favor? Give me that name. Aye. Never should have bought. That you didn't know we were into real estate. Now. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't be. I know. Yeah. yeah, let's not own any property. Yeah. No owning properties. And purchase of a new cruiser. Well. This, this is kind of maybe on hold because, um, as you can see, I gave you a copy of Oscar's email, and he said, um, although, because it, it's a 2013, and we already have a 2014, so it's like, why are we going backwards here? And, uh, he said, I know, right, although it's a 2013, it has less mileage, it's better equipped, and he said he does want to test drive the vehicle before we commit this to the select board, and Thinks, you know, obviously. So you can see this email that he put in here. Um, he gave us a car fax on it, so you can see that they have done all the work to it um, and maintained it and all the warranty stuff, which you would expect from Norwich. They're asking 12, but if they take 10, it's like, well, that's all they had. And it's equipped with lights, the computer mount, all that radio, push bar, cage siren, etc. So when I gave you some pictures of it, and obviously Oscar and I have talked as you know about outsourcing the constable position, and because he doesn't want to work, you know, um, he's just too busy working in Royalton, which I totally get. I've talked to Loretta about at Royalton about maybe her about contracting with Bethel, so we got some hours. I've talked to the VSP about contracting it. VSP is busy right now. I got a hold of um, Lieutenant Kessler, and she uh, said that, you know, basically right now they're having a hard time filling their own contracts that they already have with other towns. So, um, you, know, I don't, I, you know, obviously that would have been a nice partnership because VSP is right there. Um, but right now I haven't heard back from her. So she's, as she said, she's pushed it up the ladder, but. Uh, did Walton <laughs> give you any idea on what they would charge us? No, apparently she, she hadn't responded to my email, so when I had talked to Oscar about it the other day, he said, oh, by the way, you know, she's, she was working on something for us. Um, <clears throat> Oscar had another person in mind, which is what he asked us about or asked about before, which was bringing in another constable so that they would pick up Oscar's hours. And Oscar wouldn't take any more hours that, you know, would be set at 20 hours per week. And um, he had somebody in, in mind. And I just said, then the person needs to put an application and I agreed that I would at least meet them to see if, if I thought they would be a good fit for us or not. But um, as I've said, and I, Told Oscar that I mean, I'd like to contract it out because it just takes the liability of the police with it, um, and obviously, it's, um, you know, it, it, sometimes it's hard with the past constables 
know, you're just looking for someone who's, there are obviously not rules about who can be a constable, and you have to be, have so many hours of training, and you have to have gone through something through the academy, but it would be nice if we had, um, you know, choices. So back to the cruiser, I know we're kind of probably putting this on hold, but yeah. what's the value of our current cruiser? So if we were going to sell it, uh, you, you know, know I, we did take out a new cruiser, what's the value of, you know, or the net between buying a new one? Right, so this one would be 10, and um, I don't know what he would get. I mean, the Tahoe, we got 500 for the Tahoe. <laughs> I mean, that was the Tahoe. Not taking better out of the long time. You know, my guess is... So um, maybe maybe there's something to think about, but you know, what the value of that might yeah, be that we can get out of it. And then but I guess... On, um, but I, I mean, I don't think you'd get like three grand or something. And this but, vehicle that's here at Norwich, you know, is there anything else that would have to be added to it for us to run it? He said some of it he was you know, going to be able to take out. Power straight for winter, you know, yeah, all that stuff. He said that he would be able to take um, things off from this cruiser to put on that, but he was happy, obviously, that it was much more outfitted than, you know, this one was when we bought Because the one we bought, currently, we paid $7,000 for. $7,500. Plus, we had to equip a lot of it. Yeah. Well, I think once we, you know, put all the equipment in it, and I think that one needed tires when we got it and all that. I think yeah. We were, I think we were 10, 10 or Oh, I'm sure. I mean, the equipment is not cheap, and the fact yeah, that this right. came in with, you know, with equipment is, mm -hmm. is a big deal. So, um, but. How much is in the, in the cruiser fund? $10,000. Yeah, because he said they want 12. I'm like, they don't have it. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, what we sell the other one for. But we were actually slated in the capital plan to trade this year. We knew that. Um, that was one of the things we slated for. As he explains, and I think he said in the email too that he's got some weird thing going on in the front end. And, and the current cruiser, which he's tried to have diagnosed, but, you know, can't seem to figure out what that, what's going on. So, um, and then, I, you know, if we sat, I was talking to you the other day about if we sat on it for, let's say, another year, mm -hmm. you know, what what may we have to put into it to make that work? You know, is it, you know, I mean, if we only need to put 500 in it to run it another year, mm -hmm. it might be worth it, but if we put 3,000 into it to run another yeah. year, it's probably worth it, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. I think he was talking about Especially, you know, the whole like fuel pump and that sort of thing. Which I mean, it's challenging because, you know, just we're not filling that role right now. It's 100% capacity, and mm -hmm. however, if we did all of a sudden hire somebody, we'd have to have a vehicle for them, right? So, right, or exactly. her. So, um, you know, I, you know well, it gives us another couple weeks. What does um, the board think on cruiser replacement at this point? I mean, it's you know, it, it, it's hard. I wish we would wait until we see what Oscar doing and uh, yep. what the vehicle is. Once he touched it out and everything. <clears throat> I'd like to hear more about what Loretta might be putting together. Um, I'd like to also wonder if you had a conversation. We're up in Bethel. The, the difference in our size and population, they have like three full-time people. Yeah. And we have a 20-hour man. What, what, what constitutes that difference? Well, I mean, if you look back at, well, at least since the moment I've been on the board and kind of got handed, I would say, to us down from years, is at least what, you know, what we've been told and have heard is a majority of people in town would like to stay with the constable and don't want a police department, uh, where Royalton has a police department. So, you know, when you have a police department, then you have to meet certain criteria of coverage, you know, so then you're talking, you know, you need to cover so many hours of the day. So obviously you can't have one person if you're gonna have, you know, cover 24 hours a day. Where a constable in the thing, you're only setting aside a small work time, you know. So you may only work six hours a day. I, I, understand, I understand all that, but I mean, in my, in my little brain, I'm thinking, you know, you've got three full-time people. What kind of crime do you have in oil that we don't have in Bethel? You know, I don't know. It's it's I mean, an oh interesting. Oh my God! You know, yeah, we don't even have that. Well, I mean, like, oh, yeah, I was at, I was having the same discussion with my brother a couple weekends ago because he lives in Weathersfield, and Weathersfield has four full.
time and police officers. I'm yeah. like, what is your same size as that? We have four people. But I mean, it's just, you know, because they have a police department that they have a, I think you it's know, historic. I they think have it's a, 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 a supervisor and then they have people that, you know, because you have to have, you know, two shifts to fill, plus yeah. you have to have one person because of some ways to help, you know. I'm not sure, Dave, my guess would be it's historically that they had at least, I mean, Bethel, or Bristol, where I came from, had three full-time and two part-time. Their area was one square mile. One square mile was really just the village. And we had the sheriff's department did the outer, I lived outside. And so eventually we contracted with the Bristol PD to do Town. We gave them the ten thousand a year. We gave them, which we used to give to the sheriff's department. So, but uh, Bristol had had a police department forever. So, I, some of it I wonder, Dave, is has Royalton just had a police department for a long time, or yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know. I, don't, the, I just, I just don't understand. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't the know. Only thing in, reason. The only thing in Vermont, if your town meets the criteria, so if you have, uh, I think it's. Two or three thousand or less people, and you don't, and you choose not to have a law enforcement in your town, then the Vermont State Police have to control it. So there's a statute about right, but minimum is but they have a level of service yes. if you pay them to contract versus not. And I think in the past, and we, you know, we've always wanted a uh, a constable, not a full time police force, but somebody that could have the presence of, you know, some speed enforcement or or community involvement, I guess, you know, when you contract somebody in from outside, you don't usually get that community involved. You know, you don't see that person that comes to the Florida Festival for an hour or two, or, you know, or goes to school for a little period of time. It, they really, they come in, they do speed enforcement. Yeah. You know, it depends what level of service that you contract with right. them, but, um, so, you know, kind of depends. My, what I've gathered from my impression is, is that you just relied heavily on BSP. Oh, certainly, yeah. I mean, the majority of our coverage is done with the state police. When, yeah, because I lived outside the police district, so we just took our chance with the state police. If they had a problem, you dealt with them, but they usually just call. I mean, I think it definitely would it would be nice to see what, you know, if there is the possibility of, you know, Royalton being that they do have more law enforcement on that, maybe they could pick up so many hours a week over here and see what that looks like. And go well, there. Oscar's still giving us some hours, right? Yeah, about yeah, this, this pay period was five. Oh. Yeah. So there's not very much presence right now of anything. No, no. not here. Well, other than state police. Yeah. Chris. Other than Chris, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they don't mess around my head. Are you the one parked in front of the school the other day? We're lost bike strips. Brady Tracy. Have you uh, checked with Randolph to see how their transformation was to uh, Orange County? No, I haven't. I don't want to talk about well, it. That must be fairly yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe. He's leaving. He's leaving. Again. Yeah. So. Don't talk to him. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I had talked. Uh, I keep thinking I, need to, I could reach out to Windsor County Sheriff to see what's going on in Windsor County. That would be fairly expensive, I think. Yeah. I know when we went through this um, right before Keith came on, we had done the analysis. And at that time, it was just Windsor County, you know. And the Windsor County option, well, I think our budget at that time might have been like 14000 or a year or something. And, and I'm pretty sure Windsor County was like in the 40s. Yeah. And we quickly <coughs> that that was a cohort. <coughs> I know our budget's grown, but since then it's probably doubled in size. But but if we don't have to have to buy another another uh, cruiser, there's right. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing too is that it, you know, obviously removes all your liability. But sometimes when you bring in an outside agency like that, the sheriff, that they'll do you know speed enforcement. So sometimes if you get a percentage of the tickets, then you would. That's the way too that you can make up some of the But the other challenge we have too is, you know, it's not just on that end. We also have the animal end of things and sometimes if you contract out like the sheriff's department, they're not going to want to pick up your animal PD 
I did ask the state police if they did that. She said they are full service. Then you, yeah. But some of those wouldn't do that. Then you'd have to find you somebody. You'd have to get a job order. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. 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 Give me something to do, Paul. Don't catch you up. Give me the old picture. So. So, anyway, so we'll wait. I mean, how much time do you think it'll be before we could get something back from Burlington to start? I have no idea. As I said, she had not even responded to my email, so I, when I mentioned that to Oscar, they were down the phone, I'm like, did she get my email? And then, when I was talking to him, he's like, oh, hey, guess what I'm working on? I'm like, I don't know, what are you working on? And he said, something for you about contracts, so apparently okay. she kicked it to him. Okay. So, but yeah, and then he just, we did payroll today, and he had five hours in for two weeks. So he does have somebody else in mind, like I said, and um, I just said, fine, just bring him in and I want to do them. So we will okay with just uh, what he's like. We'll just table it for two table weeks. It. Table it. Yeah. Town manager's report. Is there anything that Kevin done over there, Therese? Okay, yeah, so the, um, so yeah, obviously you have Tim's um, update, and then it's our first change order, um, which is 18490 and it's strictly for stormwater, um, and the, we already spoke to Cindy Parks at the state, and we'll be able to roll that into, um, into our loan, so, which is a good thing, because we had tried, we put 15000 in the budget for engineering, we basically just been engineering it on the fly. So some of the stuff we've already paid for, like we've already paid for, um, we will have paid for about $7,900, not including this, on top of this that we did, we've already paid for on structures out of our budget money. That stuff we've engineered, we're spending on actual, you know, catch basins and getting it in the ground. Um, part of it was because the, um, Clay tile was just so fragile that in places this you're just blowing on it and it would crumble. So finally we said, well, give us a good price and we'll cut it right here and let you run the AC. They just made sure it was in the same trench and they just ran it. So um, so we were all happy with this. I approved the change order, obviously. And um, that's good. I mean, this way that we're going to get it done on livery, we're going to get it done on Avon, and then we're not going back later to cut up pavement so we don't look like the homes later when they say, well, why don't you want to have the ground open? So we're dealing with it now. So um, so it's been good. It was a fair deal, and we were happy with it. So um, I told you I'd bring you this. Is this team. part of that project that uh, Aldrich and Elliot were saying is $120,000? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then we said, that, you know, we made the budget decision that we weren't going to put it in the budget, but we were going to do some engineering. Yeah, exactly. And so we just said, if we can engineer on the fly and get it in the ground, then that's what we did. So, yes. So, yeah, so we've been making out quite yeah. well with we have been. upgrading some of those stormwater yes. systems when the, when the excavation opens. So. Yeah. Um, the other thing you'd want to see is how the state of Vermont calculated the $53.39 call charge for dispatching um, the the fire department. So, this is the math. Mm -hmm. This is how they came up with it. Um, so that was in your packet as well. Um, the other thing is we actually have good news is for the downtown, um, we did not originally make the cut for getting the $7,500 grant for advertising and things during the project. We got denied at the state level and the woman submitted it on to the federal level and we were like, yeah, we actually got the money. She called the other day and I'm like, we were denied. And she, <laughs> she starts, she's like, oh yeah, you were, but the, you, you made it through the federal program. Imagine we made it through that loop. So, um, so 7,500 bucks. The good thing is it's good for a year, and since the project is going to continue, obviously we'll be able to do some of the. Um, and that was for advertising. And yep, and I put in here the list of um, proposed scope of work. We talked about full advert page advertisements, the radio station, the cool webcams are already up. Um, so we have a whole list of stuff that Dietrich had come around with, come up with, so um, we're going to be able to put that in motion. So that was good news. So I'll have to tell Dave Sanborn, because I told him we were denied, which we were, but then I realized, figured we didn't stand a chance on the federal level, but we did. 
Um, the other thing in your packet is this ridiculous Act 21 sampling plan that the state is trying to fly by us. So I, I include the letter that I wrote, Tim and I signed, and, and uh, this is nuts. They, um, it would cost us a, an upwards of about $20,000 in additional testing. And it, it's crazy. They're just not even thinking about it. They have this, we feel like they should fund site assessments and then they could decide if a, if a, um, if a site has historically compromised, then make them go through the testing. But instead, what this Act 21 sampling plan is basically saying, blanket, they're gonna add all this off from the PFOAs, which we already test for, but this blanket of a huge list of things to test for. And you know, obviously, I, I wrote the letter saying, this is crazy, this is $20,000. We have 300 users, we can't afford this. You do it slow, your role here. If you wanna do the historic site assessment, there are places where, depending on the history of the town, what was, um, manufactured there. They're certainly at higher risk than we are. Um, so I sent this letter, to and I did, and also sent it to all of the, our representatives for Bethel. So Haas and... You Janice about it? Actually, no. Hey, you know, it, it sounds a little uncle, but yeah, that's she true. seems she to have... Be uh, all over it. She might like the testing. She seems to have connections there now. So. Yeah, but it would raise so, her cost. Yeah, so we did. Again, you know, this is, and, it, and it's probably, you know, at the end of the day, it's all, all, all for good. But of course, when they make these decisions, they don't understand the financial implications of these. So. Yeah, and they're already saying that there's not going to be any grant funding for. It. And I get oh, yeah, it. I mean, obviously, water is a big resource, and and they certainly, you know, the federal EPA stands behind all for a meeting of, but not in one fell swoop. Right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like 20 grand, and we just took on PFOAs last year. Right. Um, in which the the the, um, the sampling was so convoluted and so complicated and had such a high risk of being contaminated that we sent it out to be done so someone comes in and does it. And the other thing about this is, again, it's the state putting the cart before the horse because there's not even, um, there's very few labs in the state that could even do this. Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah. so um, oh, stuff like that just really sets my hair on fire. So obviously we, we sent that. Um, Have you heard anything back? No, no, no. They just, they probably just went. They, we send in comments and Vermont Rural Water Water comments and I gave it to them and she actually was so happy with the letter that she said, can I use this as a sample for other towns and what they could say? I'm like, sure, knock yourself out. So I, I know. Something she, to drop by our local legislators to I did. I sent it to them. I sent it to them, so we'll see. Um, but what are you going to do? The other thing is, besides fight it, which is what we're trying to do now. Um, the other thing is, uh, South Royalton did get back to me. Um, South Royalton BRTS, they are, they can meet next Monday, the 21st, at six is the earliest. That is their first choice. Their second choice is Wednesday, September 23rd. And they're willing to come here. Um, and I told them that we, that we meet in person um, and that obviously that it would be, you know, executive session and call to order, but it would be executive session. And, and so I dealt with their new assistant, Victoria, who was quite lovely to be with. So um, I told her I would let them know tomorrow what you chose. Well, I mean, we'd have to, I mean, if we did the 21st, we'd probably have to, well, either start our regular scheduled meeting earlier. We don't meet on the 21st. It's next month. Oh, that is, oh, that's Isn't right. it? 28th yeah. is when we meet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. What was I thinking? Um, I was doing the same thing the other day, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it would be a special right meeting, but it would be here at 6. And yeah, and it would I just be an executive session. And it would be the BRTS board and the South Royalton board. Um, so since the Select Board of Royalty makes up more than half of the yeah, yeah, word. I got two of you right here, and uh, uh, could you reach out to Chuck? No. Bobby. 
Bobby, yeah, sorry. Right, right, sure. Well, we're going to be meeting tomorrow night. Sweet. Oh, that's right. I can't make the 21st, but I would prioritize the majority on this one. And if they're, if that's their better date and it works for the rest of them, I'm okay with okay. that. What does the rest of the board think? I mean, I can probably explain you today. You the one's fine with me. Dave? I mean, I guess we should get ball. So. We should try to take the 21st. They said literally that can't make it. I can't make the 21st. I could do the 23rd, but I think if, if that's the date, they're going to have more people there. We, you know, we'd have a majority of our people here. And you guys, you already agree with. Yeah, what that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm comfortable with you guys taking this on, if that's the better date, we'll get more representation from them. Yeah. Which I think it might be. Does that work for you, Mom, Judy? Yeah. You just have to let me know. We're secretly recorded so I can see the showdown. Yeah. <laughs> or just let me know prior if there's anything you want brought up in there that you haven't already discussed. Or You're after one that trees. Oh yeah. yeah. No. I'll warn it for you. Yeah. I'll there, yeah. And then my other question is, I think the second Monday in October is Columbus Day. Right. And uh, so isn't it the I'm saying it is the twelfth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's Columbus Day. So I don't know if you wanna reschedule what you normally Obviously, the office is closed on that day. Did you meet on those days last year? I don't think so. It was like Tuesday. Do you want to do like the, the Monday before or after, or do you want to do the Tuesday? Or? Let me see. Let me the calendar. See. I'll, I'll be in town. I'll be in town. Be in town. Be in town. Right, come around. Lisa, are you able to make uh, one day or the other? So if we just said Columbus Day on the 12th, we did the 13th, which is a Tuesday, or is it easier to say more than Monday, you know, back to back meeting type deal, or? We could do. Kind of both in the past, so. Yeah, I could do Monday. Tuesday, Monday, Monday. Yeah, we could do the 19th and the 26th. It's still not going to. Yeah, well, so, yeah. Well, well, I think that that first well, meeting in October would be our first meeting. Then that's not going to be the meeting. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I'm trying to think about it. I think it's on the third. Well, why can't we do it? Why can't we do it? Or we can meet that day. Yeah, I don't have an issue with it. I can drive to that one. Um, I'll probably be no, here. I don't want to do that. Um, that's fine. I'll, are you, I'll probably be here anyways. <laughs> so, that's fine. So, do you want to just do it on Columbus Day then? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Can't take a look. Yeah. Hey, guys. Take that holiday. So, what's worse? If Vermont is not Columbus Day anymore, it's the indigenous people. Apparently your calendar isn't affiliated with the bond. I don't know. Just, just telling you what it's like. Uh, okay, so did you just think we'll bag you with that and we'll be done as well? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what else? Oh, the other thing is um, I just found out tonight. is um, A.J. Lewin uh, gave students notice. Who did? A.J. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So Just bought a brand new truck and sleep. Yeah. So, well, that's a nice looking truck. Mm -hmm. It is. So um, he told me tonight it's last day. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it is too bad. Do you know where he's going? Yep. 
Um, Mo, who was, who was the other candidate inside down? Steve something? Yes. Steve, uh, he worked for uh, uh, telephone company, Dave. Steve. Uh, Steve Perry. Perry. Steve Perry. Yeah. He's going to work for him. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what he's going to do when he works for him. So, um, obviously, I did what I could to keep him and uh, let it work Want out. So. Want me to go thump on him? Huh? Want me to go on him? Maybe. <laughs> an good opportunity for him, so, you know, you can't blame people for bettering themselves, so. So we got to look for somebody else. So, we yeah, are. yeah, I did, I did, it's tough right now, because there's a lot of openings. Chris, you can do it. That people are. <laughs> What's that? Sean, you can take over for a while. Yeah. No, I'm not legal, you know, I can't run drugs. So I did, um, I did email the like, person we had last year just to see what their experience, you know, what they have for, they can do a big truck and plow and, and uh, but we'll have to advertise it in the paper. But uh, a lot of ads out there in the paper looking. You better yeah. believe it. I mean, Branchy's still looking for a road form, and Brookfield's still looking for a road form. Last I knew, Branchy had zero applicants. The good thing about it is the construction season is getting over, so there's going to be some guys that might not want to draw them. Probably getting over earlier this year too. Yeah. So I don't know. So we'll I'll put that out. But um, I've already, like I said, I already sent an email out. Um, to the guy we had in the last year is to see what his experience level is and see if, you know, he has some time, so. Um, well, at least we're getting into the time of year where we become kind of one-dimensional, you know, more plowing, you know, we're not doing, you know, different projects, you know, grading and all that stuff. You're getting more into well, of our own. the problem is there goes your equipment operator. Yeah, yeah. 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 Greater operator. So I did ask him um, to do one final piece for me before he this was not. Did he have any ideas who might be available? AJ? Did you did ask him? No, he didn't say anything. I I I um he didn't offer anybody up. So um, I'll still see if I can ask him about it. I'll put that out in the paper. You and may want to when you go to the print with it, you may want to more specify a, a town. Which is what we did before yeah. when my dad left and we got I mean, we kind of cut out anybody that doesn't really have any grading experience or something. Which... Yeah, and, but last time we did that to replace Doug, we got no, we didn't interview a single person. That's when we brought in, you know, Dave Bershaw. You know, one thing, you know, maybe we, you know, add it to the list to talk about again and kick it around, but I know we had talked about it so ago about you know another option is to contract all the services from the highway department. Yeah. Uh, you know there's other towns that do it. Uh, Basically what the town they do a bid process a year so yeah, like, exactly. you know they'll have a local contractor that will you know bid on you know doing all the snow removal and you know doing you know they do the normal stuff. They do the whole take care of coverts and grading and yeah that would be an option but well, I mean, it, it's an option. I mean, if you're kind of yeah. back down into I mean, would we have to replace the town garage you know, then? You wouldn't have to replace the town garage, right? You'd have to sell. Maybe they buy your equipment. Right. You know, it's just something to think of. I mean, I it, you know, just like you know, Oscar and the Constable. You know, we're talking right. about. Yeah, it'd probably be an interesting cost-benefit analysis with knowing we have some major equipment needs that we're putting off. Yeah. The town garage replacement, just to just to look at what those numbers yeah. might look like. Yeah. I'll reach out. To but you are getting into the right time of year where you're going to, at least for plowing snow, I, I, yeah. I would say I'm fairly confident that there are individuals out there that at least will take on the winter. At least to get us over the hump. You know, get you through the winter on plowing snow and stuff that, you know, gives you a little bit of time until it's spring to have to kind of work. Is, it, that. is that a bigger pile than we have on the other trucks? I don't know. I, mean, I, I drove up there and I said, holy shit. I don't know. If it That's is. a bigger body. That's a big it's hunk of iron. iron. Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> that body is bigger. He's going to haul. I, I figured out to get out of half extra because they, they took the air, 
for the remediation to extend the rocks. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, might as well just start looking at what all the options are again. Okay. Doesn't matter to look, right? Sure. So, short term, anyways, what we would need really is, somebody. I mean, ideally it would be nice if we had somebody in the crew, right? But mm -hmm. ideally it would be more looking for snow removal. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I already put the doors out to attempt we had last year just to see what its buildings yeah. were for this year. And then also, I know I'll that kick Richard, in Richard, some of my Richard has not taken his, thing. Richard needs more training. He has a CDL permit, but not his gone for his license yet, so he needs some more training before he can go for his license. So I'm gonna, I'll talk to Alan about that tomorrow, make sure that happens. What about con looking at, you know, when you're looking at contracting out, maybe we find some, gonna be a lot easier to find someone to, to plow snow. Oh, sure. I wonder if there's somebody out there, some town or whatever, that would contract a grade rock right? I, I we have well, a the state might because we they have, have a grader. Grader. Ugh, I'm telling you, you know, even in my my line of work, we we run just in the long run two or three graders nonstop, and we are always trying to find people that grade. Um, you know, it's kind of like trying to find somebody that's a really good welder or something. You know, I mean, the, those trades kind of left a long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, and there's not a lot of independents out there that just grade up. Very challenging, at least in this area. I know the state has a well, a grader that kind of sits there, and then oh, I talked to Ryan Slack about it once. He said he had a grader operator, but I think the guy might have gone to Randolph, either Highway Garage or what, but I could ask. But there may be the opportunity. Yeah, I can ask Ryan that too. Um, state contract operator. And plus, do a lot of those guys, you know, they, I mean, they have paid. So, how much they use that grader anyways, but I'll ask them, that's a good idea. They scrape ice in the winter. There you go. Yeah, well, but it's, it's hard to find a grader operator. Um, you know, that's that's a skill that's acquired over, you know, decades of working. They're all old and gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can ask around. course they would have to have a CDL because um, Richard doesn't so yeah but we'll talk now. Well now we get all the good news over the road. <laughs> I am please. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. anything else? There was some uh, committee meeting minutes in our packet. I'm gonna ask the question. Uh, where are you getting your uh, uh, template with, with draft on it? It's a, it's a watermark. You a lot of draft on, watermark. Um, if you work on Word, it's yeah, if you use Word. Word it's it's sure there's some way that they, they make them so they're not white, so dark. Oh. Uh, I, I have to. Uh, uh, oh, do you? Oh, okay. To read it, it's just, some, sometimes it takes longer to read that one page it takes to read the whole rest of it. Oh, jeez. For me. No, I, it's standard when you just click on that. I'll see if I can like it. It's, uh, um, Carla, we started doing that uh -huh. when I was on the planning commission. It, it would, you could read the draft, but barely. Yeah. And read the, the rest of it. Easy to read. Oh, okay. Maybe it's, um, uh, maybe I could just like curious if there's another place. Okay. But like, yeah. I, like I said, I have to really. Oh, okay. I know my eyes are going bad. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I will. I'm just going to look at this on Word and see if I can. I'll look at yeah, Word. I was thinking when you do a draft and then it says there's a drop down, maybe I can, like, okay. if so, I can always write draft just at the top, Dave. So I'm happy to do that. And I had to flip or something. I mean, yeah. Oh, good. Well, I didn't, I'm glad you said something. I didn't know. Sometimes it'll be something important to write read. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> really important. Yeah. So, anything else coming before the board? Did we approve the minutes? Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Or amend them as the case may be. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's the policy hands. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. It's like fourteen minutes from the twenty fourth of August. So I'll have a move to accept them. Who seconded? Okay. Thank you. All in favor? All right. Uh, oh yeah, you can totally change the transparency of your watermark. You can. Okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. that drop down box. You can make it lighter. All right. Perfect. We'll do 